In 2015, researchers reported having found a huge man-made monolith dating to the Mesolithic period underwater off the coast of Sicily. There are very few megaliths in Sicily and these certainly don't date back as far as the Mesolithic. So what was going on? In this video, I'm going to take a look at the evidence. In 2015, researchers Emanuela Lodolo and Svi Ben Abraham published a paper in the Journal of Archaeological Science discussing the results of an underwater survey in the Sicilian Channel. The team reported finding a huge man-made monolith dating to the Mesolithic period when the sea levels were lower. This discovery is remarkable for a number of reasons. Firstly, land in or surrounding the Strait of Sicily belongs to the modern day places of Tunisia, Sicily, Malta, Pantelleria, Linosa and Lampedusa. Out of all these, only Malta has at any time in the past been characterised by a megalith building culture, but the monolith was found much closer to the island of Sicily. Secondly, Malta's megalith building culture dates to the Neolithic, not before. So, several thousand years after the monolith was last on ground above sea level. Thirdly, any Mesolithic presence in this area is limited to hunter-gatherer groups on Sicily and Tunisia. The cultures that inhabited these places were not monument builders. In fact, as far as conventional dating methods are concerned, megalith builders didn't appear anywhere in the Mediterranean or Europe until well into the Neolithic. The Mesolithic in Europe and the Mediterranean coincided with the pre-pottery Neolithic in Anatolia, where the remains of the earliest megalith building cultures are found. I'm talking, of course, about Gobekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe, and the many other sites in that area. But this was not something that had moved west at that point. The monolith was discovered in a shallow area of the Sicilian Channel called the Adventure Plateau when the sea floor was being surveyed between 2012 and 2014. This project included mapping the sea floor using a multi-beam sonar system and exploration by divers who took photographs and videos and collected rock samples. During the last glacial maximum of the Ice Age, this plateau formed part of Sicily. At the end of the Ice Age, with time, the area flooded, creating an archipelago, with each island separated by fairly shallow water. These islands are now underwater shoals, and it is the area known as the Pantelleria Vecchia Bank where the monolith was discovered. The 12 meter long monolith was found on the seafloor broken into two at a depth of 40 meters. It was found in the embayment between two shoals and a rectilinear ridge that make up the Pantelleria Vecchia Bank. Three holes with roughly the same diameter were observed in the monolith. The researchers suggested that the monolith is man-made based on a number of factors. Firstly, it has a regular shape. Secondly, the holes looked like they were purposefully carved. No known natural processes are thought to be able to create such regular shaped holes. Thirdly, the monolith is made up of a rock quite different from its immediate surroundings. The nearest source of this type of rock is the rectilinear ridge 300 meters to the south. So it's possible the monolith was quarried from there, then physically moved to its current position. No other artefacts were found associated with the monolith, so dating was based on the local post-glacial sea level curve. Working out ancient sea levels is a complicated process, taking into account eustacy, which basically means global sea level rise, glacial hydroisostasy, and vertical tectonic motion. The researchers concluded that the sea level would have reached the upper part of the rectilinear ridge 9,350 years ago, plus or minus 200 years, thereby inundating the embayment, which is the area where the monolith was found. So that's around 7,350 BCE. If this monolith was man-made, it's highly suggestive of a sophisticated megalith building culture in the Strait of Sicily. 
A court is submerged during sea level changes, which began at the end of the last glacial maximum and lasted several thousand years. But where did this culture come from? Or maybe the question is, where did they go? In the Mesolithic, Malta was uninhabited. The earliest evidence for settlement is 6000 BCE, and these early farmers were not megalith builders. The megalith building activity started around 3800 BCE. Both the early farmers and the megalith builders are thought to have come from Sicily. Could the megalith builders have moved to the islands of Malta and Gozo from the Pantelleria Vecchia bank area when it was inundated? Not really, because there's a few thousand years missing there. Sicily, as I've said many times before, wasn't really characterized by a megalith building culture. There are a few dolmens there. I visited the dolmen of Avila earlier this year, although that one is known as a pseudo dolmen because it's not clear if it's man-made or not. There were also pyramidal type structures, which are much debated, but most likely relate to farming activities in the medieval period or later. Then there are some other debatable megaliths that might just be natural outcrops, such as a huge pierced rock thought to align with the solstices. There are also some intriguing but undateable petroglyphs. Most of the evidence for Neolithic activity in Sicily comes from pottery found in early agricultural settlements. Prior to that, in the Mesolithic, the inhabitants lived and buried their dead in caves, such as Il Riparo della Spellinga, Grotto d'Oriente, and Grotto del Uzzo. However, there is a fascinating example of cave art at the Adora Cave on Monte Pellegrino near Palermo. It's thought this frieze depicts dancers involved in some sort of a ceremony. There's a lot of research into this painting, and this isn't the place to go into it, but I guess it tells us that a rich ritual environment existed amongst the Mesolithic inhabitants of Sicily. Perhaps a megalith building culture did too, we just aren't interpreting the evidence right. The volcanic island of Pantelleria was first inhabited during the Neolithic. It's known that obsidian found on Malta was imported from there. But these early settlers, who it's thought came from Iberia rather than Sicily, didn't build anything megalithic. By the Bronze Age, monumental tombs called Sessi started to spring up all over the island. The only other central Mediterranean courtiers doing massive building projects at that time were the Bronze Age Sardinians, who built thousands of round towers called Nuraghe, and the Taurian civilization of Corsica. So all this activity was long after the inundation of the Pantelleria Vecchia Bank. In Tunisia, the Mesolithic and Neolithic were characterized by the Capsian culture, who created rock art, created jewelry from seashells, and used a wide variety of lithic tools. Their culture also wasn't characterized by megalith building. So all this makes the Sicilian channel monolith seem something of an anomaly. Is it really man-made? And if it was, why is there no other Mesolithic evidence of a megalith building culture in the wider area at that time? Or even immediately after the inundation in the late Mesolithic, early Neolithic? Perhaps this culture moved further afield. Maybe they were the builders of the menhirs in Neolithic Sardinia or the dolmens of Iberia. Perhaps they ended up in Scotland building stone circles. This would still leave quite a time difference though. The earliest megaliths in the Atlantic coast are thought to date to around 4,500 BCE. So earlier than Malta, but nowhere near the inundation date of the Pantelleria Vecchia Bank. Sometimes when looking at the megalith builders, I think it's more interesting where they were not than where they were. As I have also mentioned on my Instagram, the Paolo Orsi Museum in Syracuse in Sicily has some really impressive and beautiful pottery dating to the Neolithic that makes me think that the courtiers inhabiting the island at that time must have been pretty sophisticated. I've also looked into some of the proposed megaliths in Sicily and I really do just see natural outcrops. Although I haven't found many photographs of the pyramids and associated altars, so I would like to visit those to get a better idea of them. Perhaps there are megaliths there, perhaps not. But if there are, maybe we just aren't seeing them. I'm curious as to what other evidence from the ancient past lies under the Sicilian channel. It's an intriguing subject and obviously quite difficult for experts to research. But if that monolith is man-made, then there must be more to be discovered. And it probably means rethinking the region and its ancient cultures as a whole.
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you've heard or read anything interesting about the topic I've discussed today, please drop it in on the comments. Thank you to all my patrons. Your support means a lot. Come and find me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter where I post photographs and reels of the places I visit. I've also got a website with some further information on various sites, megalithhunter.com.